Okay, started your time and here is your question. Should we start? No. Two seconds, please. One. Right now, if you have read and understood, can you begin your examination session? Good evening. I'm Dr. Iman Kobe, one of the exam candidates. Um, uh, could you please confirm your name and age, please? I'm Smith, 66 years old. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have been asked to examine your hip uh, by my consultant that you got a pain in the right hip during working since four weeks, uh, which includes to inspect your knee, look, feel, and move. Will you allow me to do that? Okay, yes. Uh, for, the, for your examination of the hip, I have to expose you uh, uh, from below the umbilicus and I will do it with proper privacy. Would you allow me to do that? Yes. Um, during my examination, uh, if you feel any pain, then please let me know. I will do it gently. And if you have any pain, then I will stop and will not continue my examinations. Um, okay. So at first, it will start with a uh, look in patient standing positions from all sides. I will look, is there any scar mark on the hip? Is there any wasting of the muscles like gluteus and quadriceps? Then I will ask the patient to uh, um, uh, walk a little bit for me if he can. During that, I will see the Trendelenburg sign yes, where we, yes. I will uh, Trendelenburg gate yes. where I will see the um, abductors of the hip, like gluteus medius uh, muscles are active or not. Um, should to perform the test, uh, I will uh, just uh, put um, place my right hand against the left shoulder and um, and give support and ask the patient to lift his right leg by bending the knee. Okay. Uh, in a positive test, the uh, patient feels the, I will feel pressure on my supporting hand as the patient try to prevent himself from falling over. Good. Then After that, uh, I will ask the the patient, uh, uh, before going to touch his hip, do you have any pain or not? If you have any pain, then let me know. Uh, I will not continue my examination and I will do it gently. Then uh, during fail, I will uh, palpate uh, their temperature. Is there any tenderness? And then I will feel the joint line, uh, like uh, uh, I will, uh, see the uh, joint line and then I will uh, do the um, patient uh, uh, which test uh, then I will go with the Galazia's test uh, where I will me measure the true length and the apparent length uh, and after that uh, I will uh, uh, ask the patient to flex his knee. How would knee. you measure the length of the leg? 
uh, I will measure the length from the Ziffy sternum to the medial malleolus and the uh, anterior superior alex spine to medial malleolus. Okay, then what would you do next? Then I will ask the patient to move uh, is uh, by flexion, abduction, adduction, and external rotation and internal rotation um, actively. Then I will do it by um, passively, the same kind of movement. Then I will pul pulpate the muscles and then I will go with the special test, uh, like uh, test for flexion deformity of the his, which name is Thomas test, okay. where I will ask the patient to be in supine position and place my hand under the hip. And then I will ask the patient to flex his both leg as far as possible. Uh, in case of lumbar lordosis, it will um, eliminate it. And, uh, and I will feel the lumbar spine pressing on his hand uh, under the lumbar spine. Then I will ask the patient to hold one knee fully flexed with both hands to maintain the flexion at the hip joint. The other leg then brought down. Uh, if a flexion deformity is present, the leg cannot be reached the table and the angle between the posterior spread of the thigh and the examination table is uh, in, as the angle of the flexion deformity. So, uh, and after that, I will give uh, thanks to the patient and um, will uh, unbutton, uh, uh, I will uh, just um, wear his clothes again. And then I will tell him if you, I will let my consultant know about your conditions uh, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, thank you. Then you'll wash your hands. Okay, can you present yeah. your case now? Can you present your case now? Yes. Um, uh, my patient, 66 years old, came with the right hip pain and walking since four weeks. On inspection, I um, noted uh, there is... Um, Was there any scar? Yeah. I noted a scar on the right... Okay. On the uh, right hip joint, indicating previous hip surgery, uh, there was no muscle bursting. Uh, the the lumbar lordosis was normal. The patient had Trendelenburg gait and was positive, indicating uh, right gluteal nerve injury. And on so palpation, what there. Is, what are your uh, no. So my provisional diagnosis is um, uh, superior gluteal nerve injury on the right side. Yes. Uh, How would you confirm your diagnosis? What investigations would you ask for? Uh, to confirm my diagnosis, uh, I will ask the patient at first to do some uh, uh, blood test like uh, CBC, some inflammatory markers and to confirm there's the infection or not. And I will do hip and knee x-ray both. How, what, uh, how would you manage this patient? Okay. Uh, at first, I will manage the patient conservatively like I will manage his pain uh, by giving a good analgesics then I will ask the patient if he is healthy to wait, lose, and, um, and I will give uh, the patient some physiotherapy and occupational therapy so that he can continue his normal day-to-day -day work. And after that, I will give some intra-articular cortical uh, steroid injections. And if the patients cannot maintain uh, can manage with conservative, then I will go for definitive surgery like arthroplasty. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, anyone wants to give feedback? Yes, ma'am, I have uh, some comments. Can yes. I add? Yes. 
Yes, at, at regarded the the station from the start, we yes. we, we we need to ask the patient firstly that he is using walking aids or not. This is the first uh, one. Yes. Yes. Uh, after that, after that, uh, if the patient after he walking uh, on standing position, we must search for um, uh, gluteus, uh, uh, gluteal muscles, wasting or quadriceps yes. Uh, yes. wasting as yes. uh, it is yes. indicator to yes. uh, nerve injury. Nerve injury. Uh, yes. after, after, after that, we will ask the patient to lay down on the couch and will flatten yes. the bed. Uh, but the uh, one of the most important thing uh, that um, uh, during uh, examination, before doing any movement, the patient, uh, we will uh, do a Thomas test to make yes. sure that yes. the patient the patient is inflection deformity. As the patient in inflection deformity, we will not do the extension yes. uh, examination movement for this patient. So it is important to do Thomas test before, before doing yes. the the Under movement. Yes. One. Yes. The, yes. The, okay. the other one. The other one. Yes. Uh, this station is the patient uh, uh, underwent uh, left hip uh, replacement. We, yes. uh, we 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 can to do internal rotation or external rotation for a patient with hip replacement as yes. it will be yes. uh, applied to be dislocated. Dislocated. Uh, yes. This okay. is this is my uh, my comments. Yes. Yes. Otherwise, yes. Uh, it was great. Yes. Thank agree you. Thank you. Yes. 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 Because thank you. Thank you end, for the comments. Yes. Uh, yes. At the end, when I asked you what are your provisional diagnosis, you told me about the injury. Then you have to think the examination that you have carried out. Does it go with yes. the diagnosis that you are making? Yes. At the end? Yes, ma'am. Good. He, yes, he ma was listening. He pointed out. Yes. Anyone else yes. want to add anything? Ma'am, I I have a question. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, go on. I will. I will ask that. Please continue. Yes, please. Yes, Ma I have a question. Yes. You asked. You asked uh, Dr. Ian Moon questions about the uh, length of the leg. Yes. Uh, he, she she mentioned from the sternum and the other one thing. I think she told me wrong. Okay. Yeah, that, yes. that's why I'm confused. I think it was the, uh, the great prophet tubal tubal tubal. Yes, yes. Okay. And a, another thing here you have to note, uh, or you have to notice, if the patient is an actor, there'll be no leg discrepancy. If the patient is a real patient, only then you'll be able to find uh, leg dis discrepancy, otherwise no. So this also you have to make sure in examination if the patient is real patient or patient is an actor. And then you have to read the question as well. If they are uh, mentioning anything in, about, the, about the operation or anything, and then in the exam, they are having actor, but they want you to assume that there are uh, leg discrepancies. So you have to keep that in your mind as well. Am I clear? Or yes, have I confused you? Yes. No, no, ma'am. You're definitely right. Yes. Okay. So these are the small things, you know. Uh, okay. Because she was absent, and even now from her voice, you can tell she's tired. Uh, she's not. But then uh, now that we are discussing it, her concept is being clear. So next time when she'll perform this uh, same scenario again, then her concept will be a lot more clearer. And th these small, small mistakes she won't make, make next time, hopefully. So that's why it's important to practice and important to discuss afterwards. Dr. Varki, you wanted to add something? Um, yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, um, uh, the, about the movements, I, I, I think she uh, missed to mention that uh, first she took the active movements, then the passive movements. Yes. And, uh, and another thing I uh, heard was that uh, while doing the Thomas test, uh, she mentioned about keeping the hand below the hip joint, yeah. I, I, it's, which it's, was wrong. It's fine. Yes, and yes. Um, uh, that's why and I think it's better to mention the uh, movements first followed by the measurements. Yes. That's how the examination goes. I yes, think. yes, in the, in the same order, the film 
please do listen uh, to this recording afterwards and you can correct yourself later on. That's why all the comments are on recording. So you can correct. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good. Thanks. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Start with the timer and here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering it critical care scenario, kindly tell me why patient has suddenly become hypotensive with bradycardia upon, it, upon uh, reception of epidural block. Uh, since the patient uh, had an um, epidural uh, block at the level of T3, T4 level, and the yes. patient developing uh, some hypotensive bradycardia, the uh, first important difference will be a a high epidural block. All right. I would also good. like to any uh, other. Uh, I would also like to consider other diagnosis like a distributive uh, hypertensive shock following epidural. Okay. Or it can be paralysis of the uh, diaphragm or the intercostal muscles. All right. Or uh, it can be uh, um, hypovolemic shock uh, following bleeding. Okay. Or it can be also due to some. Um, uh, hemothorax or the pneumothorax and the surgery was done on the lungs. All right. Okay. All right. What would be your first or immediate action or plan of action? What would you do immediately? I would like to call for help. I would like to inform the uh, critical care, uh, I mean, the uh, anesthesia consultant, consultant as well as before the, that. Uh, before office. that, what yeah, should you uh, do so immediately? Stop the epidural. Uh, Very good. Keep, yes. Uh, You'll stop first. Yeah. What are the advantages of uh, giving epidural block, especially in this case uh, of patient? Uh, in this patient, uh, it's a long surgery, so uh, it can give a um, uh, longer duration of analgesia, uh, anesthesia as well as postoperative pain relief in this patient. Since the surgery is being done on the lungs, there is chance for uh, pooling of secretions in the lung. If there yes. is pain, the patient is having difficulty in coughing out the secretions. So if we can give it an epidural analgesia, then the patient can cough out the secretions and this can prevent development of pneumonia. Uh, you uh, talked about not, be, not having the epidural block at the right level. So what are the levels, different levels which are used for surgeries? Can you name few, please? Yes. Um, and uh, for uh, upper abdominal surgeries, we can um, uh, the level can be T4. And for okay. uh, intestinal surgery, um, uh, urological procedures like TERP and gynecological procedures, uh, the level can be T6. And for cesarean sections, the level can be T10. And for hip and knee surgeries, L1. And for um, ankle and foot surgeries, L2. And sacral, uh, I mean, uh, the perineal surgeries and the anal surgeries, uh, sac uh, sacral area can be selected as one. Okay, what are the factors which affect the epidural uh, efficacy of the epidural block? Um, patient dependent factors like uh, age, uh, height, weight, and the procedure dependent factors like uh, position of the patient, level of the block, and uh, Drug dependent factors like the volume of the drug, um, then dosage of the drug and the type of drugs selected, as well as vasoconstrictors used. Can you tell me how would you differentiate if uh, the level of epidural block was higher from a hypovolemic shock? 
in uh, hypovolemic shock, uh, the patient's uh, extremities will be cold and clammy, uh, as well as there will be tachycardia. And in okay. uh, high epidural, it will be in bradycardia. And due to vasodilatation, the pituitaries will be uh, warm and pink. Good. All right. Okay. Can you please tell me what are the systemic effects of epidural analgesia that you can appreciate? Uh, regarding the uh, cardiac uh, thing, uh, patients will have hypotension as well as uh, due to decreased venous return, there will be um, decreased cardiac output. Very good. And, uh, and reduced have, venous return, yes. And? Then decreased uh, response to surgical stress, attenuation okay. of the response to surgical stress. Then patients will, um, uh, will have less chance of developing DVT. A deep vein thrombosis. Okay. And um, how the, should the nutrition the of the patient be managed during this procedure? Uh, pardon me. Can you please repeat the question? Uh, how would you manage the nutrition of the patient? Um, sorry, pass. Okay. Uh, the level of the epidural block depends on what? If you can tell me three three factors uh, position of the posture of the patient yes the uh, volume of the drug use and uh, dose and duration uh, dose and duration okay why test pain temperature and not the dorsal column in uh, checking the levels uh, this is because uh, the first uh, uh, sensation to get blocked is the temperature and pain, uh, because the fibers carrying these uh, sensations are unmyelinated or uh, less myelinated compared to the dorsal column sensations, which are uh, fully myelinated fibers, and they are the last to get blocked. That's why temperature and pain sensations are uh, checked to assess the level. Patient has a sudden oligouria and uh oxygen saturation has also decreased. How would you take care of that? Uh, I would like to uh, um, manage the patient uh, according to the uh, care of critically ill surgical patient protocol. I would like to check for the airway breathing and circulation. And uh, since the patient is uh, desaturating, I will um, I put, uh, I provide him with 100% oxygen or mask. If, uh, and uh, regarding Oliguria, this might be following the hypertension. So I will start uh, the patient on fluids, intravenous fluids, and think about adding anotropic agents to increase the... Um, Can you uh, please tell me a few conditions in which epidural block should be contraindicated or is indicated, uh, is contraindicated? Um, think it's very simple. You're giving in the, where, where do you choose to give epidural? If there's a condition of spine, any other condition that you can think of? If there is some uh, local skin infection. All right, good. And any other? Can there, if there is any spinal deformities. Uh, yes, like, that I already uh, told you. Any other? If patient has already low blood pressure, is already hypertensive, any other condition? Has any respiratory? If the patient condition? has any respiratory failure or any. Okay. Uh, 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 a pulmonary, uh, obstructive pulmonary. What are the okay. inotropes uh, which can be given to this patient considering patient is hypertensive and bradycardi? Bradycardic. Uh, uh, increase the heart rate uh, uh, and cardiac output. Uh, anotropic agents like the, um, uh, phenylephrine, uh, epinephrine, or um, uh, um, dobutamine or dopamine can be used. Okay, good. Very good. Okay, right. One or two different new questions for you, but then, yes, anyone else want to add anything? Ma'am, I want to know the answer of the questions. Nutrition management, if any can, anyone can tell. You tell me. Think. What fluid would you give? Mm. 
मैम शुड वी गिव डी एन एस tell me or you should all discuss what is the scenario epidural block is given because patient has space occupying region mm -hmm. and you have to do the right side of lobectomy so it's a post surgical procedure needs to be carried out mm -hmm. patient would not be having anything for mouth so you will give some fluid so how would you decide which fluid to give i mean is it um, total parenteral nutrition or something yes like yes but then how would you calculate what what should be the initial amount and then what should be the maintenance fluid how much would it be like you you have to you have to uh, you should be knowing it There is another station on nutritional. What uh, is it? Yes, yes. yes ma'am. We can read. Start reading it, and then we'll cover it in more details on that one. Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, this is uh, Doctor Joseph. Yes, please. Uh, just a clarification regarding why temperature is uh, tested first, because uh, the dorsal column. Is actually myelinated, so the conduction is actually faster in the dorsal column, right? So uh, why is uh, temperature tested instead of dorsal column? Is that the answer, or uh, is there another explanation to that? Okay. Because uh, dorsal column is supposed to be myelinated, and conduction should be faster, right? Because uh, that is a small doubt there. Yes, yeah, that can be acceptable. that is acceptable yes okay. yes yes good thank you i need to ask uh, ma'am please about the different uh, levels of epidural block please can you restate yes. again yes 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 different levels right for upper abdomen like dr worki told it's t4 for intestinal gynecological or urological like tur surgery it's t6 and for vaginal delivery it's t10 uh for hip uh it's l1 uh thigh and lower leg it's l2 is for foot and ankle s2 to s5 it's for perianal and um, perianal yes procedures so yeah thank you thank you these are all uh, it's given like in the traditional notes so you can just go through them and here is your question one minute to read the question Right. So, if you have read and understood, I am ready, ma'am. Yes, I am ready. Yes, if you have read and understood, kindly tell me what are you looking at? What is this image? What are you looking at? Yes, I see the 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 picture. Yes, right. ma'am. Okay. Can you please tell me the boundary of posterior cranial fossa? Please. Yes, the anterior. Yes, anterior is the uh, the vitreous part of the temporal bone. Posterior is is the occipital bone. Laterally is the squamous part of the temporal bone, and medially is the foramen magnum. Uh, inferiorly, 
Magnum. Okay. And Tilly, there is uh, something else as well, uh, in and addition to Petrus temporal bone, clevis. What is clevis? Clevis is uh, uh, sphino occipital synchondrosis. Yes. Okay. Can you tell me what are the bones which form a posterior cranial fossa? Occipital bone and temporal bone. And parietal as well, a little bit. No? Yes. yes. Okay, can you please tell me what is this uh, 11? From and magnum, ma'am. Yes, so what are the structures which pass through this opening? Yes, uh, the lower part of the medulla oblongata and the uh, and accessory nerve and the uh, apical ligaments of uh, dense and also, uh, also tectorial uh, uh, membranes. Okay. Uh, and the spinal artery oh. and the cerebral artery. All right. Can you yeah. tell me what is this 30 over here? What is? What is? 30, zero, 30. Can you identify this opening here? Can you see my yes. cursor? Yes, yes, yes. 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 This th 30, yes. Yes. This is uh, uh, the carotid canal. No, jugular foramen. Okay, can you please tell me what are the structures which pass through this foramen? Jugular foramen, yes. Internal jugular vein. And? Uh, 9, 10, 11 uh, cranial nerves. Okay. And yes. Uh, uh, yes. And, and something else, inferior petrosal uh, sinus. Okay, can you please also tell me uh, what is this 37 here? The um, petrous, petrous part of the temporal bone in which the uh, uh, upper border is superior petrosal sinus and the lower border is inferior petrosal sinus. Okay. Can you tell me, uh, okay, can you please tell me what are the contents of the carotid, can, uh, carotid canal? Carotid canal? Yes, please. Uh, yes, uh, uh, internal carotid artery, uh, glitter yes. and the trosal nerves and sympathetic nerves and the uh, 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 um, um veins uh, before entering pterygoid uh, venous plexus. Okay, can you please tell me what is the uh, venous sinus tract in the posterior cranial fossa? Venous sinus tract? Yes, in posterior cranial fossa. What is it? Yes. How is it formed? Yes, um, to the right and to the left, uh, the okay. right and left transverse sinus. Yes. Okay, uh, to the uh, confluence of the sinus. Yes. Uh, uh, what does it call? Conference of sinus is called what? Um, uh, superior superior sagittal and the inferior inferior sagittal. Yes. And between uh, between the inferior and the uh, uh, confluence is the straight sinus. Okay. And. Uh, and uh, regard other uh, sinuses, uh, superior and inferior petrosal sinus. Yes. Anything else? And, uh, yes, sigmoid sinus, which will continue as internal jugular uh, vein. Okay, yes. And the basilar, uh, basilar uh, venous uh, sinuses. Yes. Uh, yes. Can you and, please, uh, yes. 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 Can you please tell me what is terion? Terion is the uh, area of the uh, uh, union or confluence of four bones, including okay. frontal. Parietal, temporal, and sphenoid, yes. under which uh, pass the middle meningeal artery, which yes. uh, on any injury uh, leading yes. to what we call extradural hematoma. Yes, uh, this internal, uh, this middle meningeal artery is branch of which vessel? Maxillary. Okay, uh, can you please tell me what is cavernous sinus? Cavernous sinus. It is. Uh, venous sinus, uh, uh, there are two uh, cavernous sinus with intercavernous sinus in between, 
that is present in both sides of uh, pituitary force or cell tersica. Yes. Um, Yes. And they drain blood from where, please? Uh, it drains the dangerous. Yes, it drains the uh, area. Uh, which dangerous vessels? Area of the face, mm -hmm. which is uh, drained by facial vein and ophthalmic veins. Any missionary veins? Ophthalmic veins and uh, facial veins. Okay, and emissary veins from pterygoid and, veins, and yes. sphenoparietal sinuses as well. Okay, they drain blood to from and then to where? Yes, from the sphenoparietal. Superior inferior petrosal and this, sinuses uh, and, and internal jugular. Okay, can you please tell me, cavernous, what you understand by the cavernous sinus thrombosis? Cavernous sinus thrombosis due to yes, infection please. in the dangerous area of the face, which yes. is drained by inferior thalamic and facial veins. Due to the presence of valvulus, valvulus veins leading to the spread of the infection into the cavernous sinus, leading to cavernous sinus thrombosis, which is presented by pain okay. from swelling of the eye. What are the signs of thrombosis that you should look out for? Yes, painful swelling of the eye, gradual loss of the vision of the eye, then uh, of salmoplegia in form of uh, cranial nerves included in the wall uh, or inside the cavernous sinus, three, four, five, and six uh, cranial nerves. Okay, good. Can you tell me, please, uh, what can make irreversible damage uh, to, uh, okay, juvenile structures that form the cleavis? Uh, can you restate the question again? Yes, uh, can again. you please uh, tell me what is the juvenile structure that forms the clevis? Abducent nerve. Sphenoxipital. Synchondrosis, that is uh, what is in children. Okay. Uh, yes, can I you please tell me what are the benign tumors of posterior cranial fossa? Mangio, mangioblastoma, acoustic neuroma, ebendymoma, and ebendymoblastoma. All right, okay, yes, I have asked you all the questions related to the cranial fossa. Good, thank you. And here is your question. So if you have read and understood, kindly begin your examination station. Okay, yes. Um, I'll start by washing my hands and yes. uh, I identify myself. I am Dr. Muhammad uh, Hamdi, one of the treating doctor. Yes. Uh, may I confirm your name, the age, please? I'm Samantha, 62 years old. Uh, nice to meet you, Mrs. Samantha. Today I have been asked to, uh, to examine your neck. This will include looking, feeling, and doing some special tests. Are you okay with that? Yes. Do, do you feel any pain at the moment? No. Please, if you feel any pain at any uh, moment, uh, tell me to stop, okay? okay? Now I will start by looking at uh, as, uh, positioning the patients in front of me in the chair and the start uh, uh, and exposure of uh, of upper two button of yes. the chair. Yes, okay. Uh, then start looking at the neck uh, and if there is, uh, then start looking at the swelling and uh, uh, define the 6s where is the society and the size and shape and if uh, it's symmetrical or not Good. and uh, 
uh, if any overlying score and if any there uh, change in the color of the overlying skin uh, or any um, uh, or any scars then i will look for uh, distended neck veins yes. and then ask then give the patients uh, a cup of water and ask him um, uh, to swallow uh, uh, to swallow then uh, now uh, keep the water in your uh, uh, in your mouth and look upwards now swallow and uh, see if this if it uh, moves or swallowing or not and then ask the patients to uh, protrude, protrude his tongue um, um, protrude her tongue uh, and uh, and note if it's, if it uh, if there is any diffusion in the tongue it will be deviated to the uh, if if uh, if there is a, if there is a, as a, a movement of the swelling with protrusion of the, of the tongue, then I will start by palpation the patient and ask again if there is any pain and take a permission and then feel the lump and uh, identify uh, the surface uh, and uh, the edge and um, consistency and if it is fixed uh, to the underlying structure or not and if there is any if it is balsified and uh, feeling the below as a lump, as in I will sh shake the centrality of the trachea and uh, uh, and this and palpate uh, the neck veins, as uh, palpate the lymph nodes, as uh, a submental, submental, submandibular, periurecular, posterior, occipital, uh, posterior and anterior cervical, and uh, supraclavicular. Okay. Then I, will, then I will do percussions for the sternum to detect if there is retrosternal dullness and uh, sculptate the thyroid uh, if there is any bruise, okay. uh, denoting hypervascularity. Then I will examine, I will check the thyroid status, start by the hand, I will check the radial pulse and, uh, uh, and show if there is an in, increase in the radial pulse and uh, ask the patient to extend his hand in front of me to check if there is any tremors and then ask the patients to um, Yes, uh, while checking the thyroid status and hand examination, how would you ask, how would you, uh, how would you order or how would you ask the patient to do, what would you ask the patient to do? Thyroid status, yes, I yes. will start to, to uh, put the hands the in front. Yes, I will ask where? the patient to, uh, yes, in front of him and, uh, right. and bought a piece of paper. Uh, on the back of their hand and uh, okay. no, and observe for any uh, tremor for, for any tremors. Yes, yes. And uh, and uh, and then I will do the biceps reflex. Very good. Yes. Uh, then I will check the eye if there is any ex exosthalmus. This will be from the back of the patient, and then uh, check if there is any uh, lead leg by okay. uh, <clears throat> by holding my finger and ask uh, and moving it up and down and ask the patient to follow it if there, if there, if there is will be uh, i observe if there will be a lead leg of the upper eyelid okay as in i will as in i'll ask the patient uh, for eye movement in all directions in the h shape uh, if the, and if there is and observe if there is any restriction of eye movement in any uh, side then i will look at his leg i will ask him uh, to uh, please uh, 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 your trouser up and the sh okay. uh, and uh, look for any breathable myxedema or a proximal myopathy okay. and um, and then up, yeah. and then up and this, and they do the anchor reflex and they lastly I'll ask the patient knee, knee reflex okay yes yeah. knee and anchor reflex and then ask the patient to uh, 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 to sit up uh, with the arm crossed, if he has, if he is unable to do that, there will be proximal mus uh, muscle wasting. Okay. Yes. So you still have some time. You went very quickly. All right. Okay. Thirty-three seconds. Okay. Can you start presenting your case now? Uh, yes. Today I have done an examinations of. Um, uh, Mrs. Um, Samreen, she is uh, six, Samantha, 62 years old. Okay. She is 62 years old lady coming was complaining of a swelling in the front of her neck since eight months ago. As uh, a swelling uh, <clears throat> uh, by uh, as, as, um, 
So what were the negative things that you came across? By an inspection? Yes. Uh, complete my examination? No, no, no you have, please tell. Uh, by examination, the, the swelling is in front of her neck and it is uh, um, Was it by style? Was there any contraction? What was it? How was the swelling? How big was the swelling in cent centimeters? Tell me, please. Yes. Okay. Um, so I, uh, she is come complaining of swelling in front of her neck and by inspection, the swelling is in front of her neck. It is around two uh, multiply three centimeters. Okay. Uh, 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 How was the surface? Uh, oh, Regular oh, surface. What was the shape? Was it mobile? Yes. Regular surface without an overlying uh, signs of infections. Uh, skin is healthy. Um, the, uh, she has. There is no distended neck veins, and there, and uh, she has. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, she has some uh, discomfort uh, uh, with the swelling while swallowing water, but it is not painful. And the swelling doesn't move when protruding in the top of the tongue. On feeling the lump, the surface is, it, it okay. has no surface. So what are your provisional regular, diagnosis? Uh, um, Hello? Yes, please. Simple yes, or? A simple multinodial border or uh, cyro, uh, cyrotoxicosis. Okay. So how do you, how do you plan to manage this patient? Yes, I will manage this patient by doing triple assessment, to do uh, yes. taking the history and uh, uh, by full clinical examination and taking the, the history and then doing the imaging ultrasound uh, and uh, and also uh, and uh, and define needle aspiration cytology or biopsy yes. and uh, um, uh, labs the thyroid uh, and the um, shape for the uh, thyroid functions. All right. So if uh, you have done FNSC and patient, uh, patient's histology report comes back and it says it's difficult to differentiate between uh, carcinoma from adenoma. So what does this mean? This means that I do, uh, this means that um, it is, uh, we, I have the cytology is not enough and the patient need to do histology as this is invasive and uh, uh, it, it needs rather than study of histology, rather than psychology. Okay, good. I, so what would be your next step of management? I, I will discuss uh, as, uh, uh, with my multidisciplinary team and yes. uh, as the patient has an obstructive, uh, as the patient has difficulty with swallowing as obstructive symptoms, she, so she needs a uh, total or a uh, Very good, okay, thank you. So about examination, it was very good. But when you were explaining palpation, the first thing that I tell everyone, uh, you missed temperature. First, you have yes. to look, feel for the temperature. If there was any, then you go for the tenderness. Okay. Yes, ma'am. She, I want to add something. Yes, please. On palpation, you miss the lower body extension. Yes. You have to put the finger below the uh, lower lobe and ask the patient to deglute one. And another one, again, you have to uh, ask the patient to uh, swallow water and yes. and put to your tongue. Ask, that time you... But, but in a hurry. In inspection, he, yes. he didn't do during palpation. Palpation, yes. you have to repeat that. And on inspection, you have to also say about the face. Uh, is there any loss of eyebrows or uh, is there any change of the skin? And on hand examination, you have to also palpate his uh, palm. Is there any sweating or not that will be Good. differentiated to hypo and hyperthyroidism? Good. And otherwise, you did it very nicely very and nice. very yes. appropriately. Yes. Yes. Otherwise, he covered Thank everything. You. These are the yes, extra yes. things that, uh, because he still had 33 seconds left. So if he will adopt these small things, he'll cover it within the given time. Good. Anyone else want to add anything? 
ma'am i think uh, it was really good uh, yes, i think yes. since we had uh, 30 seconds in the end i think we, we could have used that time to yeah. uh, thank the patient ask the patient to get dressed up then yeah. uh, mention uh, i he would discuss with the consultant and let him you know i think there was time yeah. for that to put that up that's all yeah at the end closing sentences dr hamdi you can really focus like you can uh, thank the patient wash your hands and you can say okay yeah. you, you can dress up now and if you need any help i can help you in dressing up it was only two buttons but still old ladies you know once they are having tremor they cannot even uh, button up themselves so uh, considering like it's just the consideration and like okay. the doctor what he said you can just offer or you can reassure okay i'll discuss it with my consultant and i'll let you know like just the closing sentences uh, and then washing your hands as well because it's the post covid era so you have to focus on that as well very good okay. doctor we said it was very good and something yes it was good these are just uh, to give you um, to make you do extra good otherwise it was very good Okay. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Yes, please. Doctor, I it was a uh, good um performance, but I just want to find out the high signs for thyroid um, status. I don't know if we had covered that. Is that yes, necessary? he did cover lead leg and except thermos. He did he did examine that. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. and he did mention that he'll examine it from the side and the back end yeah good